Phew, times have passed. I finished my first step in the Persona series, and it was through Persona 4, a very absorbing game that took me around 30 hours to beat, and every second is worth it. Now, I went back to the real world, I went back out of my Hikikomori shut-in state and be someone more productive, do something to challenge my brains and my creativity, see what kind of things that I can make on the internet to bore the living hell out of thousands of people. I have a video to talk about for today, and like Persona 4, it has something to do about figuring out who you really are. I am in San Francisco at uh, GDC 2017. We're at the Blacks in Gaming Xbox event. Blacks in Xbox Gaming event. You know, identities are interesting. Identities describe your physical features and what makes you unique among other human beings. Names, race, gender, religion, hair color, weight, height, and many others. It can't describe who you are as an individual. You can't always relate to the issues of another person just because you have the same gender or the same race or any other identifiers. There was a time I was surrounded with so many people that are the same nationality as me. Different religions, sure, but I hung out with them nicely. However, there are people with the same nationality, same skin color, or even the same religion, and yet I can't get to hang out with them as much as I can with others that are different. We all have almost the same physical features, and yet our chemistry is lacking for some reason. What's wrong? Was my skin color not light enough or dark enough? Was it because I'm a Hindu and they're Christians or Muslims or atheists? Then I figured out that, well, we just have different interests. We have different personalities. We have different philosophies and ways of thinking, different sense of humor. We're never going to always match. Maybe we don't even want to interact with each other. I have no doubts that if people are not the same color as me, not the same race, or not even the same gender, we can hang out just fine as long as we have the same interests or the same fun topics to be talking about. So what is the point of separating yourself when you already have something in common in the first place? What about your hobby? your love of gaming. Why ignore that in favor of any of these identities, a lot of which you can't even control? We are outside 111 Mina where we just had the Women in Games luncheon, the 17th annual. Welcome everyone to the second Latinos in Gaming event. Today we're actually having the LGBTQ in Gaming event at the Game Developers Conference. It's odd, isn't it? Seeing these people separating themselves from who they are, a gamer, into what they are. Blacks, women, Latinos, LGBT. I don't get it. You already found something in common. Why not share it together with everyone else? Why not have fun with everyone else? Why create an event in which you can only interact with people who are the same as you? I find this concept of separating yourselves in order to become more inclusive is so weird. If women are passionate enough for gaming, they can hang out just as well with the guys. Yes, it just so happens that the gaming hobby is populated by men, according to so many research on gaming demographics out there. Some are more skewed than others. But we don't mind women playing video games. We don't mind black people playing video games. That's cool. Why these unnecessary separations? What are you trying to prove? What if somebody decided to make a men only, or white only, or straight only? Are you trying to say that gaming is populated by straight white men? That is true if you're living in Western countries. How is that a problem? Are you guys being kicked out of the hobby? Are there people who say, go home gamer girl, or out of gaming you insert racial slur here? If there really is a problem of racism, sexism, and homophobia in gaming, I don't think separating yourselves into different groups based on your physical characteristics or sexual preferences is a brave way to rebel against the system. In fact, it's very cowardice and spineless. You're fighting discrimination by running away instead of confronting them head on. In my opinion, the best way to rebel against the system is to actually hang out with the straight white men. And if one told you any sexist or racist things, you can tell them to screw off and this is my hobby so freaking deal with it. Let's take another hobby that, in my opinion, I'm not a fan of. For example, K-pop. If I suddenly become a fan of K-pop and I enter a Super Junior concert screeching like a little girl and then one dude tells me that I'm such a pussy, I'll tell him to go screw himself. Because honestly, to all of these racist, sexist, homophobic bullies, the way for you to win against them is to keep on doing what you do. When they look at you weird or they go, go home you, they want you to stop. Don't conform to their will. If you don't stop, they can't do anything about it. If they inflict violence because they're annoyed that you don't stop, 
then call the police. Should I have SpongeBob to illustrate this? Do you have any seven? I spent most of my like educational career and professional being the only girl in the room. And it's really good to come here and see there is actually a lot more of us than I thought there was. Yes. According to peer research, there are quite a number of women who play video games and identify as gamers. Of course, there are more than just you out there. More of you people who share similar hobbies and interests, regardless of whether or not the dominant demographics in that particular field was either men or women. Again, why the need to separate yourself in this particular event? Is this to celebrate diversity? Why does diversity need to be celebrated? You're basically celebrating on the fact that you're proud of being women or black or Latino in the gaming community. It sounds less of a celebration and more like a cuddling session. A very pathetic one at that. Most of the time I was the only black guy, <laughs> you know? So as I'm going head and head further and further, you start to feel like, well, am I the only one doing this? No, obviously. I'm still baffled why being black is relevant on any discussions of game development. I'm still baffled why being insert characteristic here is relevant on any discussion in game development. It's really important to be able to connect with people, share experiences, build that solidarity and build those connections to be able to make the experience for everybody in the game industry better. Well, I'm not exactly complaining on the idea of a social event. I'm just confused and bewildered of why the needs of separating yourself among the rest to celebrate diversity or whatever. Events like this really help to foster the people, to foster the community, and have a space and a time to share what they are doing and to share the great games that they are producing. Again, why not do that in a normal, regular gaming community instead of a community where you're being separated based on your own race, gender, or sexuality? There's no guarantee that the people who are the same race, gender, or sexuality as you are going to be as good as the people who are not. I can tell you that these people are not that good in character judgments. I think sometimes you can get stuck thinking that you're alone, but being in a space like this, it's just so warm and loving and supportive that it really energizes you to, to keep going and pushing yourself to, to be even better. Um, well... That kind of shows to me that this entire thing is just a hugging session of people who are being discriminated against in the gaming community. The only problem is, what kind of discrimination? Why aren't these things being reported to the authorities? Again, I still don't know the necessity of separating yourself like this. If you're being bullied in the gaming community, fight them back so that they don't bully again. Don't run away and separate yourself. You don't fight against the system. You don't bring any sort of change. You're running away from the problems. I've been bullied before too in so many other communities. The best way to fight is just to keep on doing what you're doing. Because again, they can't do anything about it other than whine at you. The only way for you to give them power is if you stop. And I know that you will not stop. So keep on playing Vidya and don't give in. We are so commonly kind of driven to, to try and think of our, our, our identity as something which is outside of development. You know, you've kind of got your work side and you've got your personal side. And I think that this kind of event helps us show that we are a whole people and we can bring everything that we know and all of our knowledge into that games development studio and create something really positive. Hey, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with social communities of game developers hanging around and have fun. Absolutely freaking amazing. My problem is, again, the needs of separating yourself. Not exactly inclusive if you ask me. I think games are great at being able to put people into the shoes of people that they are not. Like that's the entire point of a lot of video games is, you know, playing a role. And so if you can get more diverse creators making more interesting things from different points of view, then that's, I mean, that's a net win for everybody. Then have them make video games. If you guys pester on about people who are the same as you in terms of either physical characteristics or sexual preferences, no games would be made because you're too busy focusing on celebrating of how black or Latino or Asian or LGBT you are. How about talk about video games, focus on making the games and stop focusing on any of these identities. I'm actually really optimistic about the state of the industry and women in the industry and diversity in the industry. It's something we're all talking about. It's something that we know we're working on and we're excited about. We've seen a lot of changes and we're going to see a lot of changes in the coming years. Oh, sure. Of course we do. 
If there are people who want to do that, if there are people who are interested in gaming, sure, we're going to see a lot of change. However, you can't force people to get into certain hobbies just because this hobby is predominantly straight white men and therefore we need a little bit of diversity in there. You can't force someone who has little to no game development skills into the industry just because they're populated with straight white men. I'm not saying that people who are not straight white men are not skilled in game devs. I'm saying that if you focus way too much on the physical characteristics or the sexual orientations of these game developers instead of their skills, then you wouldn't be making video games because you're too busy focusing on hugging each other, celebrating the fact that you're brown. I think so much of this is about like sustained momentum, sustained progress. You know, you're not going to change things overnight. You're not going to get from where you are today to ultimate goal. But each year do you look back and go, hey, we moved the bar forward. Well, again, if you're going to create social events, I'm not complaining. I just don't see the necessity of separating yourself. Please tell me how are you going to fight discrimination and celebrate diversity by running away? I love what Microsoft is doing to bring out these type of events to bring more diversity to our industry, which is very, very needed, very much needed. <sighs> Western game devs are more concerned about diversity instead of the video games themselves. You know, I just finished Persona 4 and I really like it. If you guys have any good JRPG recommendations, please do comment them down below, preferably on PC or PS2 or even with classic pixel graphics. I want to kill some more time. Combining these two communities, it's like fulfills my heart and it's like the best of both worlds. It talks to me from the two cultures that has made me who I am today. And that is like true inclusiveness. So communities of gamers who are separated on their race, gender or sexuality is true inclusiveness. You know, I'm really looking forward to play Persona 5 and PS4 and so many other great Japanese games. The Xbone doesn't really have anything going for Japanese games at the moment. And by the way, I double checked on the site that they linked about gamer diversity and all of that. And this is the official Microsoft website for the record. Microsoft linked a Bloomberg article titled, Microsoft wants to make Xbox safe for gamers who aren't white men. True inclusiveness. Everyone's been super welcoming, and um, even though there's like 400 people in there, I just felt really at home, and I have so many business cards now and people I get to connect to when I get back home. Um, it just makes me so happy. Oh, sure. The GDC is great if you want to build social connections with other game developers. Just go to the right events and try not to waste your time on the really questionable ones. I kind of wanted to say thank you so much for doing this event. This has been really lovely. It's been lovely meeting all these people from such diverse backgrounds, diverse companies, and seeing that there's an industry out there for people like me. Yes, there is an industry for people like you. It's called the gaming industry. People who have the same similar hobbies of playing video games, talking about video games, developing video games, building the best of the best PC rigs, talking about console wars, shouting in online matches, unfair difficulties, game mods to suit your needs. They're all there for you. They're there to love you. All you need is to love them back. As long as you love your hobbies, they're gonna welcome you with open arms. As long as you respect them, they're gonna respect back. As long as you love them, they will love you back. You can't go out through the world with the outlook that people in the gaming communities are evil. There are good people who play video games among the really bad ones. Ones that you should avoid anyway because they have their own problems to deal with. There are great people who will share the same hobbies and the same interests as you and are willing to talk to you, respect you, and accept you for who you are. Discrimination is an issue, not just in the gaming community but also everywhere. I don't think you can solve this issue of lack of diversity by separating yourself among others. It just shows to me that you're not brave enough to actually break the system. Yes, games are mostly populated with straight white men, in the western countries at least. You challenge this by gaming with them, not by running away from them, not by demonizing them, not by separating yourself into a safe space where you can hug each other and celebrate the fact that you're brown or black or LGBT. The more and more you try to put this issue to be about race, gender, or sexuality, 
the more and more division would be made and no goals would ever be accomplished. There won't be any discussion about gaming because you won't let it. There won't be any progress made in the gaming industry because you're too busy hugging yourselves. It's time to stop hugging. It's time to stop cuddling and actually face your problems head on. Otherwise, you're not gonna solve anything. And this gaming community that you want to be made better will never ever change because you're not even involved in it. You ran. You wanna change something that you run away from? Please, think about it. Before we end this video, huge thanks to Kalam for the pledge on Patreon. You are fantastic. That's all for the video today. If you liked this, you can go ahead, click like button and subscribe for more if you wish. You can support me on Patreon, and thanks for watching.